Ireland's curriculum body advises teachers to hold classroom exercises dividing children along class and racial lines based on questions about their race, household income, whether or not they were sexually abused by a family member and more. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Before we start the video, if you want to support Gripped and our work, make sure to click like, subscribe and comment even if you have absolutely nothing to say. Just comment the best type of biscuit or something. Because by liking, commenting and sharing, the channel gets boosted in the algorithm and is seen by more people. So if you want to see this channel grow, just take two seconds right now to like, comment and do your part to support independent journalism. And with that said, on to the video. Ireland's National Council for Curriculum and Assessment has urged teachers to hold classroom exercises dividing children along class and racial privilege lines. The recommendation comes from a list of suggested learning activities for the Leaving Cert, Politics and Society subject. Under the heading Social Class and Gender as Important Social Categories, teachers are urged to set up a learning experience that demonstrates how social class and privilege operate with a list of suggested links included. And one of these links is Examining Class and Race from the website of American radical racial activist author Paul Kivel. And bear in mind that while the exercise I'm about to read frequently references America, teachers are urged to quote unquote adapt it for the classroom, presumably by replacing American with Irish. So let's read about this task which is officially recommended for Irish classrooms, shall we? I grew up believing that all Americans, or in this case Irish, have equal opportunity to succeed because there was a level playing field and affirmative action was no longer necessary. Since then, I have found this exercise useful to challenge our common assumptions of equal access. And by the way, for those who don't know, affirmative action means giving special advantages to groups who are seen as underprivileged. So it's when you go out of your way to offer more jobs to women or ethnic minorities or gay people or whatever, so you can improve their standing. So it's basically in the same vein as identity quotas. So this exercise is saying that America, and by extension Ireland, still needs to offer artificial job and education advantages to these special groups. Kivel describes how the task involves students standing in a line in the middle of the class facing the wall, and then a series of questions about one's race, upbringing, household income, family sexual abuse and so on are asked. And no, I'm not joking, this is actually what happens. Then students have to either step forwards or backwards depending on their answer to the question. The idea is, at the end of the exercise, more privileged children will be standing closer to the front of the class, while less privileged children will be standing further back, allowing the class to identify who's privileged and who isn't. Does that sound creepy and extremely weird? Oh, you betcha. Kivel even says that the exercise is to be done in silence to allow participants to notice the feelings that come up during the exercise, just to really make sure that everyone is as uncomfortable as possible. Questions students are to be asked include, but are not limited to, if you feel that your primary ethnic identity is American, take one step forward. So in this case, teachers would adapt the question to replace American with Irish, meaning that those students who identify ethnically as Irish are inherently privileged apparently. If your parents did not grow up in the United States, or in this case Ireland, take one step backward. Now again, apparently you are necessarily disadvantaged if your parents aren't from Ireland. That's what we're to believe according to this exercise. So Mexican investor Carlos Slim, who's worth $83 billion, if he and his family moved to Ireland, his son would be disadvantaged because his family is Mexican and not Irish. Are you following this? Tell me if I need to slow down. Let's go on to the next question. If any women in your family, including yourself if you are female, were ever physically or sexually assaulted in any way by men in your family, take one step backward. Why the actual hell would you ask that in a class? First of all, why does it only count if you are female and you were sexually assaulted by a male relative? If a teenage boy gets molested by his dad or his uncle or even his aunt, is that not a big deal? And second of all, what if someone has actually been sexually abused and you want them to declare it publicly in front of their peers and everyone? What kind of sick freak would recommend this for a classroom setting? If you were ever paid less, treated less fairly, or given harder work than a white person in a similar position because of your race or ethnicity, take one step backward. How do you know that that's why you were paid less or given harder work? Maybe it's because you're less qualified, or maybe it's because you're less hardworking, or maybe the boss is a jerk who just personally doesn't like you as an 
individual? Why does it necessarily have to be racial? What are we trying to teach kids here? If you were taken to art galleries, museums, or plays by your parents, take one step forward. So bear in mind, kids, you're a privileged jerk and you should feel bad if your parents wanted to help raise you with a bit of culture and knowledge of history. This sort of reminds me of that article by an English college professor who said that reading your child bedtime stories is disadvantaging other children and it's unfair because some parents won't do that for their kids. So if your dad ever took the time at the end of his hard work day to read you Cat in the Hat or if he took you to the museum at the weekend to tell you about history and the Celts, that makes both of you a pair of privileged, oppressive scumbags. How dare your father be a good dad when other dads are lazy wasters who aren't bothered to engage with their kids? It's him and you who should feel ashamed, not them. If you generally think of the police as people that you can call on for help in times of emergency, take one step forward. So here I see we're just buying wholesale into the insane tinfoil hat conspiracy that police are hunting ethnic minorities in the street for sport. And in this case, it's Ireland, so we're talking about the Gardaí here. The Irish left pushed this narrative very hard during the George and Kenjo shooting, if you remember, until we did a video exposing the reality of the situation, which went on to get over half a million views. They tried to turn him into an Irish George Floyd type figure, even after he hospitalized a Eurospar employee with facial injuries and continued to brandish a knife at police after being repeatedly warned, tased, and pepper sprayed. But apparently Gardaí are just roaming the streets excited waiting for the first migrant they can get their hands on to shoot them for their own entertainment. Well, if a teacher seriously believes that, they might be less suited to a classroom and more suited to, say, a padded cell, because that is the worldview of a demented fruitcake but that's apparently appropriate for classrooms according to Ireland's official curriculum body. Concluding the exercise, creator Paul Kivel writes that the winners of the race to the front of the class were declared before the race started. The ruling class is sitting in the stands watching the whole event with amusement, he said. They don't have to race because they've been awarded the very best, most high paying jobs before the race even began. In fact, they've been betting on who would run for those jobs the fastest. How does this added information affect people's commitment to the race? To how hard they might run? To their sense of justice? Notably, to give you a sense of where these materials are coming from ideologically, the same website linked by the NCCA includes many other radical writings by Kivel on the subject of race on other pages, wherein he advises readers to assume racism is everywhere every day. Just as economics influences everything we do, just as gender and gender politics influence everything we do, assume that racism is affecting your daily life. We assume this because it's true and because a privilege of being white is the freedom to not deal with racism all the time. He also adds that it's important to learn from the history of whiteness and racism. So all in all, this has been a very long way of saying that the NCCA apparently wants Irish children to think of themselves as either victims or oppressors based on facts about their life that they have absolutely no control over. This is radical woke propaganda at its finest and will continue to be pushed in schools until parents parents say enough is enough. Please like and share this video and if you enjoyed it please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.